What the Lord is after, completely yielded to the Father's will. It's not enough to hear the word, but we've got to do what we've heard and let our light shine to all men from on top of the hill. So are you so? home in heaven to become man. He left this glorious mansion in the promised land. Gave up his life for me that I might be set free. Now I'm free to give him back the life he gave for me. Welcome to Crossover Church of God. So good to see all of you here today, and we're welcome to all of you who are joining us online. Um, our pastor, Chris and Dee Dee, are not here today. They had a chance to get away and go see one of their grandchildren and their family. And so, uh, but we're here today, God's here today, and we're going to join in to worship. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful, wonderful day that you have made. We thank you that we can gather together in this place in the name of Jesus. And you have promised that you are right here in the midst with us. Lord, we just want to open up our hearts to you this morning. Father, with clean hands and a pure heart to draw near to you in worship. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. 
Savior, who has blessed us with every blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Father, we come before you today and ask your forgiveness for every mindset that we've had, every evil thought that we've had, everything that we have done, thought, that is contrary to your word of God. Purify us, cleanse us as white as snow as we start today. So, Father God, as we start today, there are many sick, many injured within our community, within our congregation. So, Lord, I pray for Jay Ritter's son, James, right now. He was hit by a truck. He's got broken ribs, many bumps and bruises. And just as you had a prophet prophesy over the valley of bones, bring bone to bone, put flesh on those bones, heal those bones in the name of Jesus. Remove any bruise, remove any bump that is with him. Lord, we pray for our brother Tony. He's going through some testing right now. You know every situation within that. We plead the blood of Jesus over our brother here. Because you are our Savior. You are the protector. You are the perfecter of our faith. And we know when you heal, we will be healed. So we claim that healing in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit right now. We pray for Mr. Ritchie right now. Lord, and everybody who is suffering ill effects from any man-made cure or prevention, Lord, that you would heal these, reverse these effects, that you will make them whole, make them perfect, create them a new living being within them. I pray for my brother Frank, I pray for his father-in-law. I pray for the decisions that you have to make day after day. 
Lord, I pray for your grace. I pray for your peace. I pray for your wisdom because healing is not only physical, it is mental and it is spiritual. Help us to walk in your walk. I pray for my wife, Anastasia. Right now, I pray that your healing power. I am praying right now as the head of this household, dear God, as this is part of the kingdom that you've given me to rule, I pray healing in her arms. I pray that she's able to raise her arms in grace and in praise, giving you thanks for the healing that you have provided for her. And it's perfect healing. In the name of Jesus, I pray. There is nothing that I need that he won't supply. There is nothing that I need that he won't provide. If I believe, if I believe, if I believe, if I believe, oh, there is nothing that I need that he won't supply. There is nothing that I need that he won't provide if I believe. If I believe. If I believe. If I believe. And so I say. breakthrough we pray to go through this wall that is hindering us from a new life a new walk a deeper walk with you for each one of us here and 
listening and watching this, we all have a hurt. We all have a hang-up. We all have a habit. And we need to break through this. We need to pray for this. We need to do what you say to do to achieve this. Because we do not fight with our own weapons. And when we fight with our own weapons, we fail. We use your mighty weapons. We use the weapons of God to break down these things. With these weapons, we can break down every scheme the devil has, every stronghold Satan has against us and against others. We can break through every comment, rebellious comment, thought that keeps us from fully knowing you, Father. We can conquer our rebellious ideas with these weapons. We can teach ourselves and you open to being taught by you how to follow Christ. We can help others if we are not listening to you and help ourselves. For today is the day. We pray for the breakout. We pray for the breakthrough. And we promise that we will do what you say to do so that we can walk in your glory, your honor, and your light. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. To the sun sets free. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, yes, Lord, always free. the 
services going on in this state, in this city. Father God, I pray that your will is done in each one of them according to your will. But right now, I want to talk about right here. I want to pray about right here, right now, to where the sound of my voice is going, to the people that are here. Holy Spirit, Spirit, display the power of God, the glory of God in this place right now, today, because today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Let us not leave here the same. Let us not leave here satisfied with our relationship that with you that we had yesterday. You are drawing us into a new deeper relationship with you, with the Father. You are calling your prodigals home. You are calling the lost to you. And I pray, Father God, that you would convince these people, convince them that your word is true, that you do not lie, that you love them, that you say, come to me with open arms. I am here for you. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care what people have said to you in the past. I don't care what you think about yourself. I pray that you come to me because when you come to me, your past I choose not to remember anymore. So today is the day. Today is the day. Make that decision to come to the Lord. I pray that angels that are sitting on the edge of their seats waiting waiting to sing joys and praise for you when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you find salvation because this is not a battle of good and will this is a battle of life and death and I pray Father God that they choose life We're going to sing this again in, an, in agreement with our brother's prayer and what I felt the Holy Spirit was showing me. We need to declare this over the, our prodigals. We need to declare this over this generation. We need to declare to them. So instead of singing, I am chosen, we're going to declare over them, you are chosen. Everywhere there's an I, we're just going to say you. You are chosen. We're declaring it over this generation. We are warring for them in this song. We are warring for them as we join together in agreement that the Spirit of God is being released, going after them, and bringing them home. Amen? So let's see. You are chosen. Thank you, Lord. You are chosen, not forsaken. You are who he says you are. He is for you, not against you. You are who he says you are. You are chosen, not forsaken. You are who he says you are. He is for you, not against you. You are who he says you are. Forsaken, you are who he says you are. He is for you, not against you. You are who he says you are. 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 The free. Oh, is free. I'm a child of God. Child of God, yes I am. Hallelujah, Lord, yes. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. 
Podium. I just want to say a brief word. This Sunday night, <laughs> next week, week from tonight, at six o'clock, we're all going to get together, and we're going to have some worship. We're going to have some prayer. We're going to have some more worship, and we're going to have some more prayer, and we're going to have some more worship, and we're going to praise our Heavenly Father's name, because He is worthy of that. You know what? I'm just asking you for those it's open to everyone because we've had a uh, Holy Spirit class of discipleship over the last six weeks, eight weeks, and we've come to the end. Our last one of well, my class, our last meetings tonight or today, the other class was last week, and now we're going to come together. We're going to ask for a mighty moving of the Holy Spirit in this place. We're going to cry out for revival in this place. We're going to acknowledge the Holy Spirit for who He is. I said he, not it, who he is, okay? So I'm just asking you guys, pray, seek Abba Father. It's going to be open to everyone in the church. That's why I decided to do it while we were still on, on, on live stream. Cause some that weren't able to come today, they'll be able to hear about it. They'll see, you know, I don't understand this live stream. That's why I never get up here and talk on this thing. Anyway, you guys that understand what I'm saying. But I'm encouraging you all to mark it on your calendar. Our pastor is going to lead us in worship. The, the disciples that have taken on the Holy Spirit class, they're going to lead us in prayer. It's going to be a great time of coming together at 6 o'clock on the 7th of November here in this place. I want to see the fire come out of these windows, okay? I want to see a moving of the Holy Spirit. And it's only going to be because we're hungry for it, okay? So on that note, it's all yours, sister. Amen. It's good news. I'm excited about that. Well, it's a blessing to get to share with you again today. As I mentioned earlier, our pastors, Chris and Dee, Dee are out of town today. And it gives me the um, opportunity to share with you. We're going to be talking about the journey of faith this morning. And that's why I feel like God put on my heart those songs that we sang today, that we walk by faith. And we receive from the Lord when we put our belief and our trust and our faith in him. Amen? So we're going to be talking about the journey of faith that he has called us to. So as you know, we've been in the series, The Way of Agape, for quite some time. And even in that title, The Way of Agape, the word way indicates a path that we are on. It's a path that we are to follow. And we are to walk in the way of love. The last two messages that Pastor shared with us were titled, Positioned for Breakthrough. As I lay the groundwork for today's message, I'll be sharing quotes from the first of the two recent messages that Pastor shared. And I just want to say I'm not trying to add to Pastor's message. I'm going to use like four or five quotes. It's not because I'm trying to re-preach his message I just believe that what God has put upon my heart, that there's such a connection with what he has shared with us, that I felt like that they needed to be connected together. And I, I hope that you'll see how they fit together as well. So in Pastor's introduction to a message a couple of weeks ago, he said that this is a year of breakout and breakthrough. Break out of what? Break through into what? Well, I believe that we are breaking out. God has called us to break out of our old way of life and break through into the new way of life that we have been given in Christ Jesus. Break out of the old, break through into the new. Pastor also stated, God never leaves us as we journey toward the destiny he has prepared for us. That is good news. He doesn't just call us into himself and just say, okay, good. Now you're my child. Now let's see how well you do. <laughs> let's see if you can make it to the finish line. No, he doesn't do that at all. 
He never leaves us ever on this journey that we are on, that he has called us to. And he has promised and covenanted himself to see us through to the very end. He has promised us that. He says, I have called you into fellowship with my son, and I will keep you strong to the end. But as we're going to see in the message today, it doesn't mean we just sit back and expect for the new life to just happen to us. It's not something that happens to us. It's something that we are. It's something that we're called into. It's a partnership. We have a part in this journey. So today we're going to focus on the journey of faith and our destiny. That's why the title for the message is The Journey of Faith. And the journey that we are on is one of crossing over from the old into the new, from death into life. That's what this journey is all about. Again, our salvation is not, it is a one-time experience, but it's not just a one-time experience. There is that point in time when we submit our will to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. There's that point in time when we acknowledge that we are a sinner in need of a Savior. But that is just the beginning of the journey. The rest of our lives, we are walking out what it means to cross over from the old into the new, from death into life. God gave Pastor Chris a vision of this journey when he impressed upon his heart our church logo and the desire to change our church name to Crossover Church of God. So I'm going to share from our website uh, what you have there. I put there in the notes, those of you who are watching online, um, that you can just go to crossovercog.com, and you can read all of this for yourself. Uh, but I just wanted to show it on the screen today as well, because I think it's really important that we understand this journey that we're on is not just an individual journey. It is a corporate journey. We are individuals, but we are not just individuals. We are part of a whole. We are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the bride of Christ. We are a member of his household. So when we come to Christ, it isn't about our individual journey as much as it is about our participation in the body of Christ. So I felt it was important that I share with you today the vision and the focus and the purpose of Crossover Church of God. So on April 27, 2014, the church voted to change the church's name to Crossover Church of God. It was once called Valley Community Church of God. The name has dual meaning, meaning as represented by our logo. The cross of Jesus is over us, and everything we do is under the shadow of the cross. In our present culture, it is becoming fashionable for pastors to omit references to the cross, possibly out of fear of controversy. However, we believe it is because of Jesus' finished work on the cross that we are saved and have the hope of healing and wholeness for which we strive. Notice the action word for which we strive. Again, we have been called into this newness of life, but it does take effort on our part, effort that is to be fueled and empowered. We are to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'll go on reading. Without the cross, we have no hope. Therefore, the cross will continue to be preached from our pulpit. We have a passion to be a safe place where people can come to heal and not hide, where people can cross over from brokenness into wholeness, from the old to the new. A crossing over. Again, it happens in a moment, but it's also a process. 
as it is in much of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here, but the kingdom of God is coming. It's here. It has come, but it's also coming in its fullness and in its completion. So we have been called unto Christ. We have started this new life with Christ. It is here now, but we're also becoming. So we cross over from brokenness into wholeness, from the old to the new. We want to be a place where the Holy Spirit is welcome to fill us, free us, and empower us to find our true God-given identity. That is the journey, the journey of faith. We are on a journey. We are going somewhere. We have a destination. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us to fill us, to free us, and empower us to find our true God-given identity. This crossover name is a statement of who we are and what we are about. It is our intent to be consistent with this vision in all that we do as a congregation. That statement isn't only true for the congregation, but that statement should be true for our individual lives. Individual, the whole. We need to have a vision for our individual lives. We need to know what our destination is. Because if we don't know what our destination is, we won't know if we're on the right path. We won't know how to get there. Jesus' disciples asked him, because he said to them, you know, you're going to go with me. You're gonna, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you can come and be also. And he said, you know the way. He goes, we don't, they said, we don't know what the way. How do we know how to get there? He goes, I am the way. I am the way. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will bring you into the place I've set aside for you. So when we put our faith in Christ, we crossed over from the old to the new, from death to life. These truths are our reality. They are our reality. But they are also who we are becoming. I was going to entitle this message, Faith Unmasked, Taking Off the Mask. Because we need to take the mask off of what our shame tells us our faith, the outcome of our faith is, what Satan tells us the outcome of our faith is, what our past, what our failures tell us the outcome of our faith is. We need to find out what is faith and what is the faith journey. We need to expose, continue to expose the lies. It is the truth that when we put our faith in Christ, we are a new creation. It is the truth that when we put our hope in Christ, we've been given newness of life. And it's also what we are becoming. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but we are also learning to walk in his righteousness. We are a new creation in Christ, but we are also learning how to live in the newness of life that we have received. This is our journey. It is a journey of discovery, one of growth and maturity. It is a race that we are to run with perseverance. It requires perseverance, staying power, being able to stand in spite of opposition, being able to stand in spite of negative circumstances. That's what God has called us to. In Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Paul wrote about our journey in this way. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on. I press on action, effort, 
I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is our journey. God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. We're going somewhere. Our faith is leading us somewhere. Our faith in Christ is leading us somewhere. But he says, I haven't considered myself yet to have taken hold of it. In other words, I'm still on the journey. I'm still becoming. I'm still growing. We need to hear that today. Because Satan will tell us that this isn't working for you. Look at where you are today. Do you really think your faith has helped you? you really think your faith is paying off? you really think things are changing? That's what the enemy wants to tell us. That's what shame wants to tell us. But we need to hear the truth that even the apostle Paul said, these things that I am writing to you, being led by the Holy Spirit, having a personal revelation of Jesus Christ, the apostle Paul still said, I'm not writing this to you, saying to you that I've already obtained it, that I've already arrived at my goal, but I know I'm on the journey. I know I'm in the race. I know I'm running the race, and I'm running the race with perseverance. And this one thing I do, I forget what is behind. I strain toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Our journey begins with God calling us to himself. 2 Timothy 1.9 says he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. From this passage and others like it, we see that our journey not only begins with God calling us to himself, but it begins with God. It originates with God. He has seen the whole journey of our crossing over from death to life before the beginning of time. As Pastor reminded us a couple of weeks ago, my whole being, even before conception, is instantly present before God. God is omnipresent. Go back and listen to the message from a couple of weeks ago because Pastor goes into great detail about God's omnipresence. And it's not just that he's present everywhere, but he's present at any point of time. Because he created time. Time originates with him. And he sees it all from the end to the beginning. And our whole being, all that we are, every day of our life, even before our conception, is instantly present before God. So he's called us into this journey. And he knows all about it. This is why God never leaves us as we journey toward the destiny he has prepared for us because he has already seen the journey from before the beginning of time until the day we see him face to face. God has done his part. And as our pastor shared with us, God is waiting for us to be in position and we can't be in position if our focus is divided. This is key. This is so key on our journey. God is waiting for us to be in position and to be focused. What is it that God has called us to focus on? We are to focus on living in the newness of life that God has given us in Christ Jesus. This is to be our focus. I'm a new creation. I've crossed over from death to life. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. 
So my focus now is to have those realities grow within me until the day I see him face to face. In Philippians 3, 8 and 9, we learn more about the destiny God has called us to. Paul goes on to write about his own journey, and he says, What is more? I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. The basis of faith. The journey of faith. The race of faith. He considered everything a loss. Paul wasn't a loser. In his life before coming to Christ, he was at the top of the game. And he said, it's nothing. It's nothing. Nothing I could ever achieve. Nothing I could ever accomplish. No praise from man. No position. No acquisition. There is nothing that can even begin to compare to the surpassing value, the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. When we get into position for breakthrough, Jesus is our focus. Knowing him is our focus. Being found in him is our focus. Ephesians 4.24, he wrote, and... We are to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So this is our destiny. To be found in Christ and to become like God in true righteousness and holiness. Where's our faith taking us? This is where it's taking us. This is where it should be taking us. This is biblical faith. That the day would come when we are found in Christ and we increasingly become more and more like God in true righteousness and holiness. As we walk on this journey of faith, we must remain focused on our destination. Recently, Pastor used the example of a marathon runner to illustrate what happens when we focus on something. And this runner was so focused on the pace car in front of him that when the car veered off the path close to the finish line, he followed it for a short distance until he realized he had gotten off course. The same thing can happen to us on our journey of faith. We can shift our focus from Christ to ourselves or to something else and get pulled off course. Thankfully, God never leaves us on this journey, right? So even when we veer off course, the Holy Spirit is right there saying, I think you need to come back this direction. Let's get back on the path. Amen? He's the good shepherd that leaves the 99, goes after the one. Brings him back. That's what he does for us. But we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware that our focus can be shifted. And that what is our destination? What is the finish line? Again, it is to be found in Christ and to grow into the image of God. Again, I want to say we're going somewhere specific, specific, becoming like him. We are on a journey of faith, and we have a destination, and our destination isn't temporal. It's not temporary. It's not something of this world. 
Our destination isn't getting married. It isn't buying a house. It isn't making it to the top of our profession. It isn't even retirement. It's not that we can't have or desire these things. But the question we have to ask ourselves is, what is our primary focus? If we have out here in front of us the focus of becoming like God in true righteousness and holiness, and then God provides us with a mate, and that mate enters into our life, and there's the excitement and the, the, the drawing away of our hearts to that person and the desire to be united with them, that's a legitimate uh, shifting of our focus, right, to that person spouse to that person we're going to share life with, we're going to become one with. But what needs to happen is that focus of becoming like God in true righteousness and holiness needs to still be our primary focus. Because then what happens is when he is our focus, then I can be the wife, I can be the husband that God has called me to be because God has a design for marriage. See, we think that but I have this I have to do. I have this I have to do. How can I have a singular focus? My focus and energies are divided. I'm a mom. I'm a grandma. I have a job. I'm whatever. I volunteer. I do this. I do that. We have all of these things that call, that call for our attention, and we have to give our attention to them. But this is the key. Our primary focus is in all things. No matter what we say or do, that it is all for the glory of God. Does God have a design and plan for marriage? You bet he does. He created it. Does God have a plan and a design for work and productivity? You bet he does. Does God have a plan for the family? Yes, he does. So if my primary focus is to become like him, Everything else is going to line up underneath that focus. And then it's going to be able to be according to God's plan and design. And we will be blessed in all that we do. God hasn't called us to himself just so that we can keep him on the side with nothing really changing about our lives. He's not a roommate God revealed that to me many, many years ago, and DeWitt has used it down at the jail many times. He's not a roommate. God doesn't come knocking on the door of our hearts and say, hey, I see you got some vacancy there. You mind if I move in? And we're like, oh, yeah, sure. I need some help. You know, I need a savior. I need this. I need that. I need provision. I need all these things. Sure, move on in. He's not a roommate. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the creator. He is the one who holds all life in his hands. He is the one who created all things and holds all things together. And when he comes into our home, it is for a complete makeover. It is a complete destruction of the old and a complete creation of the new. We are a new creation in Christ. We are not just it's not just a renovation. It is a complete, total takeover. <laughs> Amen? Amen. He's called us to a holy life. This is illustrated for us in Ephesians 4, verses 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life before you came to Christ, our former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So again, we see the faith journey of putting off the old, putting on the new, and we see our destiny. But notice what comes in between the putting off of the old and the putting on of the new. There's the action step right there. Our part. Be made new in the attitude of your minds. 
How is it going to happen that I'm going to walk in the way of righteousness? How is it going to happen that I'm going to walk in the newness of life I've been given? Because I'm made new in the attitude of my mind. The attitude of our minds has to do with what we believe. And what we believe to be true is that which we will put our faith in. We are all on a journey in life. And what we put our faith in will determine what our destination is. If we want our destination to be our new self, then our faith, that which we rely on and trust in, must be in Jesus and the truth of God's word. Romans 12, 1 and 2 describes it this way. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, have we not received God's mercy multiple times over? They're new every morning. We need them every morning. In view of that, in view of this Savior who never leaves us, never forsakes us, what are we to do? We are to offer our bodies, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There again, the renewing of your mind, being made new in the attitude of our minds. So we see here in this passage of Scripture that the transformation of going from the old to the new happens as we offer ourselves to God and no longer conform to the pattern of this world. What that means is, is we no longer live according to what the flesh desires, but according to what the Spirit desires. We set our hearts on things that are above where Christ is. We set our minds on things on the that are above, not on earthly things. We recognize that our citizenship is in heaven and that we're eagerly awaiting a Savior from there who will transform our lowly bodies so that they would be like his glorious body. This is our blessed hope, to become like God and share in his glory. Truly nothing, nothing of this world can compare to that. Nothing. So we see that the renewing of our mind is a key element to this transformation process, but there's more. In 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 11, we see the beginning of our faith journey, we see the middle of our faith journey, and we see the end of the process. As with everything The beginning of the process begins with God. So in verses 3 and 4, it says, His, God's divine power, has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them, You may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Participating in the divine nature is the putting on of the new that we've been talking about, right? We put on the new man. Participation in God's very nature. Escaping the corruption in the world caused by evil desires is putting off of the old. It is God's divine power that enables us to do this, and we access his power through our knowledge of him. Then in verse 5 through 7, it says, For this very reason, for what reason? That he's called us to participate in his nature. For that reason, make every effort to add to your faith. So faith starts us out on this journey. But God is saying, if you're going to reach the destination, there's some things that you're going to have to add to your faith. 
You are to add goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. And the end result of the process is found in verses 8 through 11. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but it's in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them, whoever puts their faith in Jesus and just goes on their merry way, trying to live life, with God kind of like a sidekick, and we just try to go on with life. We come to church. We just try to do the best that we can, and we hope that we can get into heaven. We we try to hang on to that that faith that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and ah, I hope I get in. But that isn't what God has called us to. He's called us to add things to our faith, but if we don't, He tells us what's going to happen. He says in verse 9, whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind. You can only see what's right in front of you. Could this be that this is why we are so overwhelmed by life? Because that's all we can see? Because we have forgotten that we have even been forgiven, that we've even been cleansed from our past sins. Because we started out in faith, but we didn't keep going on the journey. We didn't keep growing. We forgot what our destination is. We forgot what God has called us to. And that's what he says here, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So he says, therefore, Since this is true, since this can happen to you, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So in verses 8 and 9, we see what happens if our li- in our lives if we don't engage in the transformation process. And we've already mentioned them. We're ineffective. We're unproductive in our knowledge of God. We're nearsighted and blind, forgetting that we've been cleansed from our past sins. And when we're in that place, this will result in our listening to the voice of shame rather than the voice of God. Shifting our focus onto ourselves rather than keeping our focus on Christ. The enemy is a master at getting us to focus on ourselves. That is his game. If he can get our focus off of the prize, if he can get our focus off of our Savior, and shift the focus onto ourselves, he knows what is going to happen. Shame's going to kick in. Discouragement's going to kick in. Doubt is going to kick in. Depression is going to kick in. Fear and anxiety is going to kick in. All of those things come when we get the focus on ourselves. So God is saying, Keep your focus on me. I am the author and perfecter of your faith. But if we will engage in the process, the reverse will be true, right? We will be effective. We will be productive. We will not forget that we've been cleansed from our past sins. So just for a few more minutes, I want to focus in on the middle of verse 5. Make every effort to add to your faith. For us, the beginning of the transformation process starts with hearing the true message of the gospel and putting our faith in Jesus. Faith is the beginning point of our journey. Love, becoming like God, 
is our destination. Adding the virtues of God to our faith is the process through which we are transformed into the image of God. So again, it, it starts with faith. Add these things to your faith. Where does it end up? Love. The beginning is faith. The end is love. And God is love. So when we grow in love, we're growing in the image of God. The faith that we have received is precious. It is the most valuable commodity that we possess. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he writes about the value of our faith. He says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. If I will keep my focus in the right place, the gift of faith that I've been given is going to express itself in love to God and to others, and it's going to be in increasing measure. It's so important that we understand that part. It's in increasing measure. So we don't jump from putting our faith in Christ and being the Apostle Paul. We don't pump, jump from putting our faith in Christ and becoming like Billy Graham or Pastor Chris or anyone else on your list. It doesn't, we don't make that jump. It is a process. It is an ongoing process. We are called heavenward in Christ Jesus. It is an upward cycle, growth cycle that God has called us on. And then in Galatians 6.15, he, also, he, he, he repeats the same thing, but he says, what counts is the new creation. So notice in those two verses that Paul highlights faith, love, and the new creation. Faith is the beginning of our journey, but if our faith is something other than in Jesus Christ, and if our destination is something other than becoming like God, we will not be able to express ourselves, our faith, in love. The problem is that we expect ourselves to just be the new creation that we are in Christ, rather than understanding that it's a growth process. That's why discipleship is so important. God did not call us to make converts. He called us to make disciples. This is a faith journey, and we need to be taught how to walk it. It wasn't until the end of his life that Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So we just read earlier that the Apostle Paul says, I'm not writing this to you as if I've already obtained it, but I'm pressing on towards the goal. And at the end of his life, he was able to say, at the end, because he knew he was crossing over. He knew the time had come when he was going to see Jesus face to face. He knew the time had come when he was going to receive his reward. And then he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He knew it was a journey. It is a lifelong journey. Lifelong. In increasing measure, upward. Ever going upward, upward, upward until the day we're called to see Jesus. Yes, we're going to grow tired along the way because it is a lifelong journey. 
Yes, we will face discouragement and hardship. But we must remember that God does not condemn us, reject us, or leave us in the difficult seasons of life. God is always calling us heavenward. That is why Paul was able to say, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead because he knew where his goal was. The other thing that we must remember is that our growth is incremental. Looking back at 2 Peter 1, verse 8, it says, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure. This is the journey of faith, growth, discovery, maturity, becoming more and more like God in increasing measure. We must also remember that the test and trials of life help to facilitate the growth process. So what happens is when a test and trial comes our way, we are tempted. It, it, it's tempting for us to feel like we've made no progress. It's tempting for us to feel like, as I said earlier, this isn't working. This isn't working for me. Discouragement can set in, and it feels like we're back at square one in our walk with God. I want you to know today, and I praise God that he spoke this to my own heart. When the trial comes in and we're faced with the same struggle, whatever that is, we're faced with the same struggle, we have to remember we are not at square one. Just because that same struggle is presenting itself to us, we're not at the same level that we were a few months ago, a couple of weeks ago, a year ago, however long it's been that God's been working in that area of our lives. I don't care if it's been decades, because it's been decades for me. And the enemy wants to tell us, this isn't working. You're a failure. You're a mess up. As pastor says, Shane comes in and joins the party. But what we have to remember, we're not at the same level. We may be facing the same devil, but we are not at the same level. We are not back at square one. We are at, the, we are at a different level facing the same devil. But guess what? At this level, it, if we will let it, if we will let it, if we will turn to God in the struggle, it will throw us back into that growth cycle. Because if you notice in 2 Peter what it says, the cycle is faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, brother godliness, mutual affection, love. It's a cycle. It's a growth cycle. And every time we get thrown back into that cycle, guess where we go back to? Faith. Because what's being tested? Our faith. That's actually what's being tested. So every time, if we're going to grow in that cycle and keep going upward in Christ, it starts back at faith again. And we go through that cycle again. And then we may cruise along at that level for a while, and then another trial comes in, and guess what? We go back to faith again. We go back to goodness again, and we keep going through that cycle, and we keep going upward, 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 upward until the day we see Jesus. If we know that, if we understand that about the process, then the enemy cannot pull us into his trap. Because we will be able to say, like James, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Keep our eye on the goal. 
What is our goal? Maturity. What is our goal? Becoming like God in true righteousness and holiness. And it is a lifelong process. It's a lifelong journey. But the, our Bible tells us that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter until the dawn, till the, till the morning dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Who is the morning star? Jesus. Jesus. Our path grows brighter and brighter. So when that trial comes in, when that dark time comes in, when that difficult season comes in, cry out, oh God, thank you, Lord, I'm going back in the growth cycle. I'm leveling up. If you're a gamer, I'm leveling up. I'm leveling up. Who does Mario, I hope I get my game right here. Who does Mario always face against? Bowser, right? No matter what level you go up, Bowser's there, right? And you just got to defeat Bowser at that level. And that is the same thing. Same devil, new level. Same devil, new level. And we are leveling up until the day we see Jesus face to face. Amen? This is our journey. I'm going to have the worship team come up because we're going to respond to the message with the song, making a declaration of our faith. And we're going to be singing a song, I have decided to follow Jesus. So if there's anyone here today physically in the, in the physical building or watching online, if you have not made that decision to follow Jesus, as our brother prayed earlier in the service, today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of breakthrough. And Father God has made it very simple. He's made it very simple. He loves the world so much that he gave Jesus, his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him, puts their faith in him, will not perish but will have eternal life. God loves you so much. He just wants you to come home. That's all it is. It's coming home. It's coming home to a heavenly Father who loves you, who created you, who has made you in his image. So, Father, I just pray today that if there is anyone listening to this message, that you are moving upon their hearts and convicting them by your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name that they will respond and say, I have decided. I am going to follow Jesus. I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to ask him to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And according to your word, Jesus, they will be born of God and become a child whose name is written in your book of life. And we thank you and we praise you for this in Jesus' name. Let's stand and let's sing the song as a response, as a declaration to the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus.
thank you that you have called us to yourself. Thank you that you have called us to be children of God. Thank you that our destination is heaven, but it's not just heaven. Our destination is you being fully and completely restored to the image of God. We praise you and we thank you and we ask, Father, that we will choose to set our eyes on you, that you are our number one primary focus on this journey of life. And we are looking for the day when you will come to call us home. And we thank you and we praise you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today.